I'm Sam Bagnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. In the review of General Psychiatry, 1995, it says, The person with schizoid personality disorder sustains fragile emotional equilibrium by avoiding intimate personal contact, and thereby minimizing conflict that is poorly tolerated. Schizoids are often described, even by the nearest and dearest, in terms of automata, robots. They are uninterested in social relationships or interactions and have a very limited emotional repertory. It is not that they do not have emotions, but they express them poorly and intermittently. Schizoids appear cold and stunted, flat and zombie-like. Consequently, patients with schizoid personality disorder are loners they confide only in first-degree relatives, but maintain no close bonds or associations, not even with their immediate family. Naturally, they gravitate into solitary activities and find solace and safety in being constantly alone. Their sexual experiences are sporadic and limited, and finally, they cease altogether. Schizoids are unhedonic. They find nothing pleasurable or attractive. But they are not necessarily dysphoric, sad, or depressed. Some schizoids are asexual and resemble the cerebral narcissist. They pretend to be indifferent to praise, to criticism, to disagreement, and to corrective advice. But deep inside, they are not. They are creatures of habit, frequently succumbing to rigid, predictable, and narrowly restricted routines. Intuitively, a connection between schizoid personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder seems plausible. After all, narcissists are people who self-sufficiently withdraw from others. They love themselves in lieu of loving others. Lacking in empathy, they regard others as mere instruments, objectified sources of narcissistic supply. But a distinction must be made between social interactions and social relationships. The schizoid the narcissist and the inverted narcissist, they all interact socially, but they all fail to form human and social relationships. All three types fail to bond. The schizoid is uninterested in bonding. The narcissist is both uninterested and incapable due to his lack of empathy, pervasive sense of grandiosity, and abhorrence of intimacy. The psychologist Ellen Deutsch first suggested the construct of as-if personality in the context of schizoid patients. A decade later, in the 50s, Winnicott named the very same idea as the false self personality. The false self has thus been established as a driving engine of both pathological narcissism and pathological schizoid states. Both Cloninger and McWilliams observed the faintly contemptuous attitude and isolated superiority of the schizoid. But these are narcissistic traits, so schizoids are in a way narcissistic. Theodore Millen and Roger Davis summed it up in their seminal tome Personality Disorders in Modern Life. They say, Where withdrawal is an arrogant or oppositional quality, fantasy in a schizoid-like person sometimes betrays the presence of a secret grandiose self that longs for respect and recognition while offsetting fears that the person is really an iconoclastic freak. These individuals combine aspects of the compensating narcissist with the autistic isolation of the schizoid, while lacking the asocial and unhedonic qualities of the pure prototype. Both the narcissist and the schizoid are examples of development arrested in early childhood and late in early adolescence due to envy and other transformations of aggression. Greenberg and Mitchell, in their famous book Object Relations in Psychoanalytic Theory, wrote, The term narcissism tends to be employed diagnostically by those proclaiming loyalty to the drive model, Otto Kernberg and Edith, Edith Jacobson, for instance. Mixed model theorists, such as Kohut, who are interested in preserving a tie to drive theory, also use this term, narcissism. The term schizoid 
tends to be employed diagnostically by adherents of relational models, such as Ferber and Guntry, who are interested in articulating their break with drive theory. These two differing diagnoses and accompanying formulations are applied to patients who are essentially similar by theorists who start with very different conceptual premises and ideological affiliations. What Grimberg and Mitchell are saying is that schizoid is a narcissist by another name. United States psychologists, uh, theorists and UK psychological theorists simply use different terms to describe the same mental health disorder. Kernberg regards mature narcissism as espoused, espoused by new Freudians such as Grunberger and Chassugus Mergel. He regards the very term mature narcissism or healthy narcissism as a contradiction in terms, an oxymoron. Kernberg observes that narcissists are already grandiose and schizoid, detached, cold, aloof, and asocial at a very early age. He even ventures to say that when they are three years old, their narcissistic traits are discernible. Like Klein, Melanie Klein, Kernberg believes that narcissism is a last-ditch effort, a defense to halt the emergence of the paranoid schizoid position. In an adult, such an emergence is known as psychosis, and is this is why Kernberg classifies narcissists as borderline, almost psychotic. Even Kohut, who is an opponent of Kernberg's classification, uses Eugene O'Neill's famous sentence in The Great God Brown, Man is born broken, he lives by mending, the grace of God is the glue. Kernberg himself sees a clear connection between schizoid phenomena, such as alienation in modern society and subsequent withdrawal from social contact, between this phenomena and narcissistic phenomena, for instance, the inability to form relationships or to make commitments or to empathize. Fred Alford, in his book Narcissism, Socrates, the Frankfurt School and Psychoanalytic Theory, summed it up nicely. He says, Fairburn and Guntry represent the purest expression of object relations theory which is characterized by the insight that real relationships with real people build psychic structure. Although they rarely mention narcissism, they see a schizoid split in the self as characteristic of virtually all emotional disorders. It is Greenberg and Mitchell in Object Relations and Psychoanalytic Theory who establish the relevance of Fairburn and Gunther by pointing out that what American analysts label narcissism British analysts tend to call schizoid personality disorder. This insight allows us to connect the symptomatology of narcissism, feelings of emptiness, unreality, alienation, and emotional withdrawal, with a theory that sees such symptoms as an accurate reflection of the experience of being split off from a part of oneself. That narcissism is such a confusing category is in large part because its dry theoretic definition, the libidinal catexis of the self, in a word, self-love, seems far removed from the experience of narcissism as characterized by a loss or split in the self. Fairburn's and Gantriff's view of narcissism as an excessive attachment of the ego to internal objects, roughly analogous to Freud's narcissistic as opposed to object love, resulting in various splits in the ego necessary to maintain these attachments, this view allows us to penetrate this confusion. In other words, coming, coming back to myself, in other words, narcissism is not about self-love. It's about a broken ego, a broken self. And narcissists withdraw from society exactly as schizoids do, in order to pr protect this vulnerable, precariously balanced house of cards that they have constructed. They, in an attempt to shield themselves from any hurt or pain, they have actually isolated themselves in a glass house. And they are afraid of every occasional and random stone thrown at them. Hence their aversion to criticism and disagreement.